tech earnings this week. Google had a great quarter. Let's go over that a bit here. You're all Mamata Freeberg. They beat top line and bottom line. Stock popped 5%. Looks like cloud and YouTube are the story here. Total revenue, let this sink in, 88.3 billion, up 15% year over year. Search was uh, 49 billion of that. And uh, their operating income is now up 34% year over year. I think the CFO is getting some work done there. 28.5 billion. And net income was 26.3 billion. Interestingly, people are expecting even larger profits. They got a new CFO over there who said they could push a little further on cost cutting. And she said the company will use AI to cut costs by streamlining workflows and managing headcount physical footprint. I think that means more layoffs are coming to big tech. YouTube had a tremendous quarter. Ad revenue, 8.9 billion, Jamath. That's up 12%. But Sundar said something interesting. He said YouTube surpassed 50 billion in total revenue over the past year. And so if you do a little uh, bote math, that's the back of the envelope math for those of you at home who haven't heard that acronym. Google doesn't report YouTube's non-ad revenue, but we know YouTube had 35 billion in ad revenue over the last year. That means they're doing about 15 billion in premium paid products. YouTube TV, NFL Sunday Ticket, YouTube Premium, which is the greatest product ever. It takes ads out of YouTube and makes it usable. So a 70-30 split. Cloud had a blowout quarter. Google Cloud, I see that all the time now. $11.4 in revenue on 35% annual growth with $1.9 in operating profit. I mean, it's printing money. There are seven quasi-monopolies in the world. They're all American. And if we allow them to flourish, we'll be good. If we hamper them a little bit and allow other companies to pick up the white space, we'll be great. Over to you. Okay, there's your, that's called analysis, Chamath. And what if and we break them analysis. up, Chamath? And if we break them up? I think that you'll have a lot more, the, the sum is greater than the parts. I mean... Clearly, YouTube the, would be so, one of the so great you, companies right the, now. If you out. take the perspective of if you own stock in any of these companies, the some of the parts analysis would tell you that the breakup value is greater than the way that these companies get discounted. You can look at the multiples that they trade at and you can see that. So if you're a shareholder of the company, you actually silently probably want them broken up because you'll get individual shares that are each will be worth more. Separately, if you are a shareholder of the United States economy, you also probably want them broken up because then you'll just have many more companies creating economic value, which then drives the tax rolls, which benefit the United States balance sheet. It's hard to see unless you're an employee of the company or you derive a lot of ego from the existence of a company the way it is that you would need it to stay where how it is. Well, let me challenge your point on two fronts. In Google's case, both YouTube and GCP required many, 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 many billions of dollars of investment over many years. Same with Waymo, by the way, at this point, that took a long time and a lot of capital to get the payback on. If those were standalone businesses and they didn't have the profits being derived from search and ads over many years, they would not have been able to build those incredible businesses. So if you do break these businesses up, what you do lose is the ability for an American juggernaut to be able, just like Amazon did with AWS and Apple did, and we can go through the list, to build these new businesses that require the cash flows from the old businesses. As separate companies, it becomes much harder to make that degree of an investment. That, your, that, angle, that angle of belly aching is not going to pass muster because it's all about litigating the past. And you got to play the ball where it lies. Where it lies is this business is in a position where you can probably demarcate four or five logical business units. Again, I'm not saying today, that it should today, happen, for sure. but yeah, it yeah. will happen. And and the, the argument of, but the past is not going to work. No, 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 I'm not. Yeah, I'm not disagreeing with your point about like, hey, if these things broke up, people would make money. I'm just, I'm just trying to understand this point about American dynamism or whatever you want to call it, that these companies are all in America. They've all been successful because they've been led by amazing founders. They've reinvested so much of the profit they've generated back into building insane new businesses that took a lot of capital and a lot of time. And eventually they paid off. 
and they became the next generation of ginormous new businesses that would have not have possibly existed if not for the will and the cash flows coming from those old businesses. The, but the you also percent. have a companion economy in the capital markets where there's hundreds of billions of dollars that go and fill in the gaps. And I think the reality is the people in the capital markets are not stupid. And if these big companies hadn't spent hundreds of billions of dollars, the capital markets would have. So if I don't Google think didn't, that, that- If Google, yeah, let's just play a scenario, and I'm, I'm not trying to relitigate the past, but if Google did not own YouTube, what do you think would have happened been with fine. YouTube? It would have gotten funded and it would have been fine. It mm. would have raised it, the billions and, and the reason, built the infrastructure. Because you do you remember YouTube had a real they infrastructure were under problem? under a serious lawsuit. I think they would have shut the down. The reason is because people are smart enough to understand when then there's the potential to make money. Okay? And the free markets do a really good job of highlighting where that's possible. Again, there is no point relitigating this, but I think could it would GCP have gotten funded. Or, yeah, could yeah, GCP been or fine. AWS get funded with $10 yes. billion? Dollars? Yeah, because I guess that's what OpenAI is, is, right? Why does, why does CoreWeave get funded today? How is yeah. CoreWeave allowed to even exist? Why doesn't it all go? Because investors are smart. They see that there's an economic rationale for there being multiple players. And then there's a smart founding team that creates a justification that gets it going. So the era of the monopolies, monopoly on building new monopolies is over. <laughs> that, well, I don't right. think it's I don't think it's ever existed, but I think the point is that big businesses are there to eventually grow a GDP so that they can be disrupted by small companies. That's what you want. <laughs> because if you had the same seven or eight companies, then you could make the argument that we should have stopped at the East West India company and everything would have been great. It's yeah, not true. I mean, it is what we did with the railroads, it's what we did with the AT&T, it's what we did with Standard Oil. Like when, when these when these monopolies were built in the US, they were all broken up. And, but hold yeah. on, it's not necessarily what we did. It's the boundary conditions that enabled other people to then go and fill the gaps. And I think that that's a, a reasonable- The economic boundary conditions. You know, Sachs had this great tweet this past week, and I almost quote tweeted it, but I thought, I don't want to create a lot more noise where there doesn't need to be. Sachs is paying attention now. But he had this tweet about taking back the licenses for the main yep. broadcast channels. And I thought that was an excellent thing. And I quote tweeted something where I was like, yeah, we should buy that for all in. And I said it half jokingly, but <laughs> I didn't. Because I think that if those licenses were up for grabs, what would yep. happen is a bunch of private equity people would get behind Rogan, a bunch of private equity people would get behind us, and we would all bid. And the outcome would be better. So the point is that these small structural changes, and I know that it may seem large to break up Google, it's not. It's a small thing in the grand course of American business history. It's not going to really matter that much. Would be good generally through the lens of the individual shareholder and through the lens of the shareholder of the United States.